Negative back with a review of Transformers issue 7. Okay, this is the start of new artist Jorge Corona, who I don't know know too much about, at least at least his pencil work. I, I you know, I think I've seen his inking work. And um, Daniel Warren Johnson is still on title, at least till issue 12, as far as we know. And there was a lot of concern over whether uh, Corona could keep up with uh, Johnson's fen phenomenal art in the title. And I have to say with this issue, he does a pretty fantastic job. I mean, I think uh, he's uh, leaning a little too much on trying to look like Johnson just to keep, keep continuity. But, you know, it's kind of, I remember when I was a kid, I really loved the uh, Don Perlin, Ian Ack and Brian Garvey art team, which was around from issue 14, 13, 14, but Perlin was on it around thir issue 13, all the way through 35, and then Jose, Jose Delbo took over with 36, and I said, Jose Delbo, who passed away recently, um, Mr. Perlin, thankfully, is still with us. And uh, I wish I I, I I would have got a chance to meet both, both men. But I remember being weirdly devastated over Jose De I mean, I got used to Jose. I, th I thought Jose Devil was a good artist. I never quite thought he was a good artist for Transformers. But um, I also think he was with a night carrier that I, with the majority of the one I did not did not enjoy looking, whose art I did not enjoy. So um, I really... Uh, I remember just being kind of devastated uh, by that. You know, I was eight. So um, this guy, he does a lot. I, you know, I kind of want to show some art. Like, like uh, here, here's like, because there are a lot of spoilers in this one. Like for a transitional issue, there's a lot that happens. This, uh, we have this interesting opening four page sequence in Cybertron. What's interesting is they don't specify what time it is. We get to see Cup, Huffer, um, Warpath, one of my favorites, and Alita One. You know, continue, continuing the. This is not your Marvel. This is not your Marvel run. This is this straight up uh, cartoon run. You know, we never saw Alita One in the comics, just like we never saw Cobra Law in the comics, at least until Tim Silly showed up. Um, I, I will say like, um, Corona is more traditional as late in his uh, uh, layouts. Um, less like hyperactive manga influence it's it's interesting like some of its great occasionally the, the layout look doesn't look quite right the character gets blown up and you're like is that oh yeah it was that um and there's a but anyway this sequence we see alita one um she and uh other familiar faces like i said huffer warpath cup are looking for something and then it's in a beautiful drawing but we don't know what it is and then there's a and then we then uh, we find out uh, Starscream. For once, there are consequences to its actions. You know, like we always get to the point where Starscream, but this time he's confronted by another character, which I'm not going to spoil. But it was a pretty clever. Um, basically, there there has always been a like point where I think all of it, all Transformers fans ask, why doesn't this character have a, have a have a larger role? To, why doesn't this character take over the Decepticons, basically. Starscream gets a challenger to his... And it's a character that, quite frankly, considering his intelligence and fan base, as, um... Yeah, why not, why not him? Why not him? Why not him? And so, uh... And it is a pretty amazing sequence. Um... And which seemingly takes Starscream off the board for a while. And uh, it's going to be really interesting because part of this issue is also um, we find that we get an update on Carly and she is obsessed with getting revenge on, on Starscream. And what's interesting is that that uh, opportunity in this issue is seemingly being being taken away from her. And it's it's uh, it's pretty effective, you know. She gets the speech about um, don't let the from R.C. R.C. Or she is like, don't let the hate consume you, and she tries to explain that to explain that to her, and we see another familiar face in a flashback. And because it's like the the Stepticons are bad, but the Autobots are tired, you know. Cliff Jumper, 
feels guilt over because Carly hates his guts, you know, and, you know, both Carly and Spike have lost their fathers. And then there's a really weird, you know, it could be one of two things. Either basically um, Optimus Prime has a vision of himself holding a baby. Now, either it's a lot more likely spark plug when he merged with the Matrix, his memories are somehow inside Optimus. But I hope it might be something else. But that would be, you know, and there's a lot of uh, subplots about Chubbatran 1 and Basically, for for table setting, it's one hell of a hell of an exciting table setting issue. Again, I you know I just I d wish I could show you some of this action, but like, uh, you want to see it for yourself. Like, okay, I'll show you something. Like, look at this, look at this right here. It's boss, you know. Of course, talking about spoilers, one one of these covers really spoils it, and. Um, but again, like, this just feels like the characterization is solid, the pacing is good. Like, why is this one of the best comics on the market? Why is a Transformers comic the one thing that's animating people right now? I mean, not that there shouldn't be a good Transformers comic, but what? But I just, it's like, there aren't any creator-owned books that are operating this level right now. I mean, the last one, the last creator-owned book that everybody seemed excited about was Saga, when, and that... The hiatus for that book pretty much killed it. I mean, but, you know, it just, it, I mean, I'm ha I'm really happy. I really enjoy this book. I just wish there was a book that I could feel about that wasn't based on an I, a pre-existing IP that I liked as a kid. I mean, again, this is a highly, I highly recommend this. I think Corey Corner's great, doing a fantastic job. I just wish, um... You know, like, you know, it's just, this is great. Like, why can't everything be great? Why can't, like, a lot of other books be great? Why can't anybody, why can't current creators operate on the level that this is operating at? Like, you know, and I don't, and I, I don't want to dis. I mean, there are, you know, creator-owned books I'm liking, like Local Man. That's a very good book. Um, and I, I have to say that I think that's operating on a pretty good level. But I also just feel like there's just something missing in the, in the it's been missing for a while, and uh, and I don't think Comics Gate is a solution to that problem. Before you ask, anyway, um, once again, I highly recommend this. Um, once again, like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Just read this book; you will have fun. It looks great, um, and uh, I think there's a lot. It does say a lot about the character. You know, it, it examines the character's trauma without wallowing in it. And anyway, um, thanks a lot, and I will see you a bit later with more reviews.